Oh, welcome along to the All Blacks podcast on the road, and uh, myself, Jay Reeve, Roundy. How are? Good, mate. Good, mate. And I'm enjoying this uh, on location uh, setup. It's good. Yeah, I'm here at the Mount Monganui uh, Mount Monganui Sports Club, and it's only fitting that we're in behind the um, in behind the goalposts here uh, with one of uh, one of the. Footy members that's probably spent more time behind the post than any other player that I actually know. A uh, very good friend of mine, Mount Monganui's favourite son, Jared Hoyata. How are? Very well, thank you, mate. Now this is this is special. This is special for me to be actually catching up with you because uh, we have been friends since school days and 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 followed your career through. But just before we get all the way back into those school days, uh, what are you doing with yourself these days? At the moment, uh, finally hung up the boots last season and stepped into. Uh, a rugby role as the Taranaki uh, Academy Manager. So that's my official role, but I'm also doing a few coaching gigs as well. So we've got the Chiefs under 18 um, group and also the Chiefs under 20s, which unfortunately, as you know, a lot of age grade footy has been canned uh, this season, but um, still getting around the regions and doing a lot of TID and, and uh, looking at a lot of school rugby. Now it's back up and running. What And what is, is it looking good? It is looking good. It's, it's great that school rugby is is back um, is back up and running because uh, for a while there, um, you know, it was pretty unknown if it was going to go go ahead or not. So there's well in the NACI this weekend is a big game uh, Tuesday, the so Francis Douglas versus um, New Plymouth Boys High. So I'm looking forward to that. It's not at the gully this year, which is obviously as you know, Jay. Um, you spend a bit of time there yourself. Yeah, it's pretty awesome when they get Special the hacker going eh, on, at the gully. But it's at, at, at college this year, so I'm looking forward to looking forward to that game. You're doing a little bit of ghosting in the coaching scenes as well. You've uh, in the Chiefs fold, getting around the likes of uh, Gaddies. What's what's it like going from player to sort of that that role and seeing those fellas operate? Yeah, yeah, I am. So I'm helping out with um, Taranaki Bulls this year as well. So part of that is getting around um, the Chiefs. Um, Neil Barnes, the Fords coach, there is. Uh, he was actually the coach when I first moved to the Naki real top man and top operator, so getting around him and like you say, Gats and Roger Randall, um, Tabai Matson, there's some awesome coaches to learn off, so I'm just being a bit of a sponge and soaking up as much as I can. Um, obviously as a player I've been in a whole lot of different high performance, um, high performance environments, but it's good to be there as a, as a, on the other side, on the dark side as a coach is, um, is cool as well. If you wind it all the way back to Tauranga Boys College, you were uh a, what a, a post hitter, a volleyballer. Uh, you'd always played code. There was uh, you have had a had a penchant for rugby league as well. Some very high and hard hits out on the out on the paddock there. Posters of Gordon Tallis on the uh, on the wall <laughs> in the bedroom, and and growing up in a in a large family, the oldest of what is it seven six six, yeah. um, it, and no no stranger to the paddock and no stranger to the no stranger to the contact. Tauranga Boys College, you were a skinny beanpole and first 15 for a couple of years in there in fifth or sixth form. And then where to from there? Yeah, so after Tauranga Boys, um, went down and started my, um, started peer teaching down in Canterbury. That's right. So that was my first um, taste of, of uh, rugby kind of education, I guess. Um, was that old boys with, uh, with Roundy, my mate next to me here? So that was. Um, Coming that was in at about 90 kgs, if that, weren't you, back uh, then, mate, when you got off the mate, plane? Yeah. I, I think most <laughs> guys thought I was a young, skinny winger coming in. Or, <laughs> yeah, and I had a bit of long hair at, at the time as well, so I think they thought I was off some kind of um, <laughs> sheep farm in the back of, <laughs> back of somewhere. I don't know what they, what they were expecting, but um, managed to go a ride and, and got pulled into the academy um, in Canterbury, and it kind of took off from there. It was a pretty hectic setup down there. There's some pretty impressive players, and that was the, the same era as DC and those lads. Uh, you weren't a st- you weren't a stranger to sort of top level footy even through school. What was the, What was the jump up like down there? And and how did you uh, how did you get on being? Because you're a big frame now. What are you tipping the scales at these days? Yeah, I've, I've filled out a bit. I'm about one seventeen at the moment, but at the time I was I was ninety seven, so um, pretty small. But I got straight into senior footy. But back then there were guys like uh, Mertz was running around for our club team, uh, Ruben Thorne, so it was, um, you know, you got chucked in and you had some pretty awesome role models that got you up to speed pretty quick. So um, no, she was a, a quick learning experience. You had your first game for Canterbury? That's right, yeah. And that was a special one 
That was awesome, mate. So that was um, so like I said, Moots was in our club team, and it was actually his his final game for Canterbury. So a big a big crowd turned up at um, I think it was called Jade Jade Stadium yeah, was, at the yep. time. Um, yep. And it was a Ranfurly Shield game as well, so that was pretty special for me um, to play in that game. But it was um, it was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I got injured uh, playing for the development side the, the week after. Um, had to have surgery, and then that's when uh, the necky came came knocking. Had seen enough, and um, after talking to a few people, I made the the trip north. You hadn't spent much time in Taranaki before then. Now it's probably you've home more than anywhere else. Yeah, well, my wife's from there. Um, and it's definitely my home away from home. Um, I still call Papa my home, but um, yeah, I spent, geez, my whole my whole Mitre Cup year, uh, career there, bar one year with Harbour when I come back from overseas. So, it, um, yeah, I definitely see the Naki as home as well. Got player of the year? Yeah, first year there, um, the fish. Um, one of the best, one, <laughs> one of, of the, the scariest people that I've ever been beaten up with by at boarding school. Yeah, one of the greats, one of the best looking men I've, I've um, <laughs> had the privilege of locking with. Um, so he took me under his wing. He was a, he was a champion. Um, so me and him were the two locks. I think even Fish in, in his heyday only tipped the scale was about yeah, yeah. 105, and I was at the time I'd write on the, on the sheet, you know that. S and C trainers would make you write your weight down, and I'd always lie and, <laughs> and say I was one hundred and one or something. Um, so I felt sorry for the props back then. But lucky we had big census Johnson. Uh, that ended up playing a long time in France, so he was tipping the scale was about one hundred and fifty. So you know, um, he was making he, up. He didn't mind a little javelin behind him uh, <laughs> like me, but uh, no, it was good times. That, that level of aggression that um, that fish brings to a game is that sort of something that. I guess it's quite, kind of old school footy, that's sort of how you'd probably class yourself. Always been an enforcer, like I said in the beginning. No stranger to being between the sticks. Uh, love the mongrel in the game, love the biff. Yeah, yeah, just something that come natural, uh, naturally to me. Um, watched a lot of league um, growing up. The old man played league. I'd go to his games as a young fella and, um, and watch him behind the post, so I thought that's what you were meant to do. <laughs> you know, I thought that was, that was good stuff, but... Um, <laughs> That kind of stuck with me my whole career, unfortunately. Refs picking on me and all that kind of stuff. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. Now Tito, was, Tito was good. He's um, obviously a very um, aggressive player as well, but he is also very smart. So I learned a lot of um, fish in terms of um, tactics and, and, and um, how you play the game as well. But mate, you're. Um, I remember playing club forty with you, like down in Canterbury. And even though you weren't necessarily the heaviest man in the world, you always had that aggression. You know, kicking around with people like Reuben Thorne, Craig Clark was in the old boys team as well. And you always used to. It's almost like um, because the reason I'm thinking that is after watching that Michael Jordan series on Netflix lately, where he would tell things to himself that weren't actually true to motivate himself. That was something that stuck out for me. You know, he'd pretend some guy trash talked him. And I feel like certain people in the Christchurch club competition. Maybe Brad Moore, current All Black coach. Uh, maybe Trevor Brown, another guy who played for Canterbury. It felt like you had created vendettas with these people before we got on the field. Was that something that just, you know, mate, got you up for game day? Yeah, it did. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I kind of hated everyone <laughs> I, I, I played against, you know. Um, but then I'd play with them later on and rep teams and, they'd be and get to know them, and they'd be you're right, they'd be absolute champions, and we'd be good mates. Yeah. Um, good example is one of the. You know the teams I played with lately in, in Montpellier. Um, I played with uh, Bismarck Duplessis. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, and I think every time we played um, the Sharks in Super Rugby, me and him had a dust up. <laughs> I, I hated him, and I just tell myself, yeah, this guy's an absolute mutt. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm going to get him. You know, and um, we ended up spending every second weekend together in Montpellier, having a brai and uh, yep. a steak and, and barbecuing together. He's a, he's a top man. Him and his brother Yanni. So yeah. And also, do you? Like because you do love your league, you've loved it from as long as I've known you. Um, is there anyone out there that has a better collection of old league jerseys than you? Like I felt like every training you had another one that you could pull out of the locker with the old school V necks going down. Like you've you've still hung on to those? I think I have. I've got <laughs> uh, like Jay said earlier. There's um there's four boys, yeah, um, four younger bros, you know, that have robbed me of all my kit. Um, <laughs> And my league jersey, so I've got no idea where they've gone actually. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I definitely love my league. Was there ever a ch was there ever thought that you'd been rugby and go the league route? Was it anything? Did you ever entertain that? Yeah, definitely. We spoke about it, um, but I think just the opportunities in New Zealand with rugby, and I, I was I, lo I was loving my rugby as well. So it was kind of um, 
but it is it is it is something I thought about. I always love watching the Warriors, love watching um, State of Origin, and you know we'd always have um, big parties and get together when the Origin was on. Um, DC was another one that loved his Origin as well. So it's always something that was kind of spoken about, but at the same time, just never really. Because he did Thanks say, Jared did used to say um, when he was a bit lighter and um, before he started really embracing the fact that he was a lock and a tight forward, he used to say, I hate rucks. I hate rucks. I just hate having to go to rucks all the time. <laughs> I wish I could yeah. just run and offload and like run out on the open. So, But in the end, you obviously embraced the tight forward. Maybe it was uh, Tito who got you into it, mate. Yeah, in the end, I think I, I love rucks. It was the only time <laughs> you could really try and put some damage on someone. So it was like... Um, and even now, with the new rules, they've even yep. taken that away. So that's when I knew I had to hang up the boots. <laughs> <laughs> you had a you had a stint with the sevens. Was that ever a, was that ever on the on the cards for you? What? How did that transition come about? Oh, I don't know how that came up, but it was I had an absolute nightmares. Um, <laughs> so Titch got me in. I had a good year with the Naki the first year down there. It was going all right. Um, and got called into a sevens camp. I was like, oh yeah, I'll give this a go. Sevens. I, I like playing sevens at school. Um, got here actually just out here so when I look out on the field at the moment I, I start getting a bit sweaty because um, <laughs> Titch used to just destroy us uh, I used to actually go to bed and it was just like when skins and compression tights and all that were coming out and they were the big trend and I'd um, go for, to go to bed full skins and I'd just go to, go to sleep I'd go lie down on my bed and shut my eyes and my mate I'm, I'm okay if I don't wake up in the morning <laughs> I'm, I'm done <laughs> I'm done with the sevens life um, <laughs> Titch used to think if you went across the road and jumped in the hot pools and then come back, you were good as gold. <laughs> Even though you played like, you know, he's fitting it, done about three uh, beep tests and, and you've played sevens against the top, you know, because you've got 14 guys at camp, 14 of the top sevens players in New Zealand. It's pretty tough going. Yeah. Um, but he'd think if you jumped in the hot pools, you were, you were good as gold. So um, I still have nightmares thinking of old Titch. But it was a great time um, and I learned so much from it. Um, in terms of skill development and just how hard you could train. I thought I was training hard and then I did Titch's trainings and I realised just how much harder you can actually push yourself. So yep. in terms of my um, career, I, I think the Sevens was, was great for a young kid like me. You had a good bunch of lads in there too. Yeah, we did. It was DJ Forbes actually his first year um, as Skip. So I was right, right. back then. Um, we had guys like Alfred Palanisi. Uh, he was Sevens yeah. Player of the Year. Flex. Um, and guys like Rene Ranger and, and some really top players. So it was, uh, it was a good team. We won it that year too. Um, I managed to go to Dubai and South Africa. So great experiences, great experiences for a young kid. What's Titch like as a, as a coach and as a bloke? Oh, mate, I don't know. As soon as you say Titch, I, I start sh <laughs> shutting down. Um, <laughs> um, but no, he, he was a good man and he, 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 um, he got so much success from the Sevens because he trained the boys so hard. Um, but yeah, no, nah, he's, he's, he's earned, earned his respect, I think, as a coach and as a, as a trainer. Rolled into Super from there, uh, picked up by the Chiefs. Yeah, well, I had a year with the Hurricanes, um, so their chat around the sevens was like, you're a bit light, you need to put on five kilos. I went to the sevens and lost five kilos, so that was, <laughs> that was the end of my sevens days, really. Um, but had a year with uh, Coops, Colin Cooper at Aye. Hurricanes. But my first um, full contract was with the Chiefs, I think it was 2010, 9 or 10, around that, around that time. Um, Fozzie was a head coach at the time, so that was my first introduction to... Super rugby. Some pretty special uh, pieces of kit in that team as well. Uh, Demel Monch. Oh, Demel Monch, the Viking. Yeah, <laughs> the strongest man I've ever seen, ever witnessed. Crazy. Yeah. Didn't he get he uh, Didn't he get locked out of the gym? He got banned from going yeah. to the gym. He couldn't throw the ball because he was too muscly. You know, I think he <laughs> bench press record was something crazy, like two hundred and thirty kegs um, oh on the bench, God. which was just unbelievable. Oh and he'd whistle. He had whistle because he had such terrible asthma. Oh, I know. I know. He could only play about 13 minutes at a time because he's just so buggered. And he would go so hundy, like he was a beast, <laughs> man. He was awesome. And, uh, but yeah, absolute specimen. Yeah. <laughs> you got that, the, you got the, um, uh, the Hong Kong Tens uh, trip as well, which was a pretty special one for you. I, I remember seeing the photo of you and, and, and the big man. What was it like to play alongside Jonah? Yeah, that was very special, uh, playing with Lomu. Um, I still, to this day, I've played with some um, pretty top players like Dan Carter, Richie, Sonny, 
guys come to mind in terms of their celebrity, but I saw nothing like Jonah in terms of Hong Kong. Um, yeah. Hundreds of people waiting outside our hotel. Every time we went everywhere, they just follow us, follow him. They just want to talk to him. And how good he was with those people too was pretty special. Um, so, yeah, that was an awesome memory of playing with him. What's he like? Because obviously everyone sees him as a player and knows him as a player, but to, was he completely different off the paddock? Was he good times? They talk about building Pajeros with massive sound systems in them. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he was the champion. Um, the team I played for was actually the New Zealand Legion, so they had actual legends at the time, so yeah. like Lomu, uh, Razor was in the team, yes. Razor Robinson, uh, a few others, a few other um, ex-All Blacks, and then they had a few young guys that was kind of like the mix. So for me, it was just a, an awesome experience to get alongside those guys and learn off them and um, just spend time with them. But to answer your question, he was a champion. Uh, the... The Māori All Blacks came a knock, and how good were those? Uh, how good were those games in that team? That was a super team as well. Like just a bit of a quick roll call on some of the lads that were in that team, because this was a monster. The best team, the best Māori team I played with, would have to be 2010. So they had the centenary series. Um, we played the Barbarians up north, uh, and then we played against the Irish um, in Rotorua, and then we played against England in Hawke's Bay. So it was awesome, sellout crowds. Um, but our, our team, yeah, guys like Ben Afriaki, who's been on the podcast, um, Corey Flynn, you know, All Blacks, uh, in the locks, Isaac Ross and myself, um, who is in the loose, Tanido Latimer, guys like Liam Messam, Colin Burke, uh, I saw his jersey up in the club rooms here, actually. Um, guys like Aaron Smith and Dane Coles, too, was in that team. Uh, Jose Gear, yeah, the, the list goes on, but it was just all, all guys that ended up representing um, the All Blacks or... Even guys like Sean Maitland, um, yep. who went on and played for the British Lions, guys like that, it was a um, pretty special team. And kid floating around the back with his... Yeah, kid Louie, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Robbie Robinson at the back uh, with a flowing moule, <laughs> um, just ripping them apart though. We beat Ireland and England, so it was, yeah. it was a very special uh, special time. Was that, what made the team so special? Was it the players or was it the, the coaching? Was it's, it it's always a special time being in, in the Māori All Blacks, but that was extremely special because they... It was um, such a strong side. Um, they released a few of the fringe All Black boys at the time to play and stuff like that. And because we got to play at home, usually with the All Blacks, uh, the Māori All Blacks we're playing on tours. Um, so to play at home in front of your own family and um, friends and, and whānau and um, get those massive crowds was, was awesome. And was that the, is that what inspired you to head south to the... To Landers country? Yeah, well Jamie Joe was the coach um, and really clicked with his coaching. Um, obviously he was uh, he played the same position and played a pretty aggressive style of footy so it really, um, yeah, really clicked for me and a few of us, he took myself and Aaron Smith and a few guys like that all went down um, to the Highlanders to start the rebuild down there which was, um, which was pretty cool and a pretty um, big part of my rugby career down, down south. Do you reckon it was him that sort of I, I guess kind of formed you up into that, but that that was kind of the peak. That was the top level. You got yeah. you got you as a very loose, aggressive. He could see the talent and and moulded you into the player that you sort of became. Yeah, that's right. He had a great ability to tap in into my psyche and um, getting me playing my best footy. Uh, it was definitely my best best footy playing um, down with the Landers and and to be part of the rebuild. You know, to go from one of the cellar dwellers to one of the top teams in the competition consistently was was pretty cool to be a part of that. And what was that though? Was it um, like was it having a clear definition of what they wanted you to do? Like hit rucks, mate, make as many tackles as you possibly can, rub a few noses in the ground. Like was it giving clear direction? Um, around there was there was some of that. Like some of the tech this probably can't share on here, but some of it, <laughs> man, he'd just be like, okay, these are their top two players. So example, playing the Crusaders. Okay, um, who are their two big dogs at the moment? Brad Thorne and um, Richie, yeah. So like, oh, I just want you to hit them every single ruck, you know. Yep. And so, like every ruck, I'd be, I'd have my core roles to do, but I'd also be, yeah. Um, you know, I'd have that as part of my um, part of the tactics was to really attack them every time I could, um, and I enjoyed enjoyed that part of the game. <laughs> what was it like going? Because I I know at your house in your room, Brad Thorne was on the wall. What was it like to line up against them? Yeah, it was, I enjoyed it actually, and, and to play with him later on too, um, and I learned a lot of him in terms of just some of the core roles he, he did. Um, he's a very... He's a freak. 
he is a freak of nature, but he's a very simple man. So he likes to tackle hard, clean rucks hard, scrummage hard. About <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to actual tactics, he's um, you know he's he's pretty limited, I guess. <laughs> um, but he's a top rooster, and he's all about um, culture and 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 strength and conditioning is a huge part of his game as well. And that's why he had such a longevity in the game. But he, he was he was awesome as well. And me and him were just. Um, I think he loved it because when he first went to Canterbury, I think he played with the Crusaders and no one knew anything about league. Yeah. So when he, um, me and him used to room together and I'd just, <laughs> I'd just be talking his ear off about <laughs> league and he was loving it, you know, he'd be talking about all these old league guys and yeah. stuff like that, so it was, no, it was good. But it was your footy down there, like like Jay said, that's that's when you played your best footy um, and almost sort of, um, well, that that was the spot where you got your opportunity to play for the ABs, wasn't it? Like um, from a... A young, skinny boy, you know, from Papamoa coming down to Christchurch. Did you ever think that was on the cards, mate? Like, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, not at all. And, and from school, like, I, I played first 15 rugby, but I was never in, like, um, I played um, base secondary schools, but I was never one of the top players, you know, yeah. that was destined to go far. So a bit of a late developer, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I, I'd never thought of playing for the All Blacks. So to get in there, um, like I say, after being a skinny little white boy that just hanging out at the beach and, yeah. And enjoyed um, playing ball rush with my mates. The making that was um, pretty cool. Yep. And it was a stack team too. I mean, it was that was like the depth on that. Because what was it, two thousand and eleven? Yeah, two thousand and eleven. So I think I was the only new. I think there's a spates um, yeah. bottle cap. <laughs> yeah, that I get. I get photos sent to me quite often, which is which is quite cool though. Um, I was the only new All Black that year, so I was um, I was walking into a team that was, um, you know, had been had been established for quite a while. Um, so that was that was an amazing experience. So, and mate, in your games, you played against South Africa, didn't you? Like, yeah, I did. You yeah. Played against what big Vic- Victor and Bucky's. Yeah, yeah. Mate, so how good was that? Because you know, as like you say, you like to play that enforcer role sometimes. Or those are two of the biggest enforcers that have ever blimmin' run out on the field, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Well, I think maybe that might have been part of it because we played against the Bulls. Um, obviously, it was Super Rugby, and um, I remember. One of my favourite games in my career actually was against the Bulls and they had their full South African four pack, the yep. boys you mentioned, plus others. Um, and in the hotel, watching TV all day, there was this ad kept coming up, come and watch the Bulls break the Super Rugby record of home wins. I think it might have been 18 at the time and it kept going over and over and I was just getting pissed off. I was like, oh yeah, let's go then. <laughs> um, and we were way smaller. Like whenever you play against the South African team, you're way smaller. But Jake yeah. had us bouncing off the walls, and we were just ready to rip yep. in. And at that stage, we had no, no big dogs. We were just a bunch of battlers that just wanted to play for each other. Yep. Um, and we just ripped in, and we beat them in Pretoria. So that was pretty special. That's that was their the prime hardest. as well, wasn't it? That, that was their when absolute the, prime. Yeah. So when the Bulls won it back to back, we knocked it over the Crusaders regularly. Like that was their absolute yeah. go time. PSBs, they, they, the they two were. locks, like the yeah, half. They back even had. The third um, South African lock at the time they had playing six, so they were gigantic. Like a guy, <laughs> um, I can't remember his name, Rousseau it might have been. Yeah, but they were huge. Steinkamp, who looks like a a murderer, you know, like <laughs> guys. That I was just looking at, holy, Shit. it's going to be a big, big yeah. day here. What yeah. What is it about them? What makes them so big? Because like Ebert Eastbeth, what an absolute specimen of a human. We should be cloning him. We should partner him up with some lovely Kiwi lass and, and really start working on some future generations of footy players. Yeah, well, there's been rumours about what they get up to to get that big, but I won't, <laughs> I won't go into that on this podcast. But um, no, in all seriousness, no, the, the, their diet, they just mm. eat slabs of meat and they're just, just huge men to start with, like the, um, you know, their Dutch ancestry, I think, has big a bit to do with it. Yeah, they? Yeah, big African, African their, men. It's in um, their blood. Yeah. But they just love it. Like I, I, like I mentioned earlier about the um, barbecues of Bismarck and Yanni, yep. yep. and um, they would call a salad. Like, <laughs> do you want me to bring a salad? Oh, yeah, bring a salad. And they, a salad to them was chicken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was interesting. That there's no greens. It was just all meat. You know, they were, oh, right. but yeah, they were absolute units. When you're, mate, in the, when you're in the AB's fold, uh, from having posters on the wall of uh, Thorny, then getting to room with them, uh, and to, was that sort of a pinch yourself moment? And at the same time, I'm, the difference between rooming with someone like Thorny and then jumping in with, with Richie, reading the gliding magazines or whatever it was. When he was yeah. He's checking out propellers for helicopters or something. Yeah, bagpipe practice. That was, that was a tough gig. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was good. There's was, there was plenty of chat going on with Thorny. Not so much with, um, with Richie. You know, we didn't have too much in common. But 
um, learn a shitload off him though. He's obviously the goat, old um, Richie. But um, yeah, uh, definitely two different rooming um, partners. When you're lying in bed and then Richie turns the TV off about eight o'clock and um, Radio, mate. yeah, well I'm not going to argue with the <laughs> skip, you know it's looks like oh yep we're going to we're going to sleep then <laughs> <laughs> sweet ass it's big pipe breakfast yeah okay <laughs> but for you mate that test match against South Africa that was the pinnacle like that was um, you know one of probably the All Blacks' greatest foe and getting to play against you know perhaps two of the Two of the best locks, or one of the the best locking combination that's that's ever been around. That's you got to look back on that and think, shit. You know, if nothing else has happened, that was a big day. Yeah, well, my first test was against Fiji, and that was also special because mum and dad and my wife come yep. down. Um, and it was also special because it was at the uh, at Carisbrook House oh, of Pain, yeah. so that was pretty cool. And then the following, that was the last ever test match at Carisbrook, shit. and then we moved into the um, the glass house, you know, indoor yep. the zoo. Yep. Um, so that was that was special as well. But then yeah, I played two test matches, one one against South Africa in um, Wellington, which we won, and then went over to South Africa and played South Africa, which was probably um, yeah, it was really special yep. playing there. Different running out in front of that crowd. Oh, I just remember the hucker. I think Pity was leading it, and he um, started the hucker, and you and they started to sing. South African started to sing. And it was in the brand new uh, Nelson Mandela Stadium, so it was like the acoustics, you know, were pretty, pretty amazing, and you could not hear anything. So everyone's kind of giving pretty the side eye, trying to, you know, <laughs> see where he's at, because you could not. It was just like this buzz deafening. in your ear. It was deaf. It was actually deafening. And I, you know, bouted out the hucker as hard as I could, and could not hear one word. You know, I couldn't wow. hear myself at all. It was, it was uh, pretty surreal. Proud moment for the old boy to see you uh, line up in the black jersey and, and bout out the hucker. I know that Selwyn's <laughs> a hearty individual. Yeah, no, I think he doesn't say too much, you know, you know, Dad. Um, but yeah, I think it was a proud moment. And for to have him to come down south to him and mum was, was really cool. Oldest brother, and uh, obviously, I guess, trailblazed it for the rest of the boys. Younger brothers uh, following your footsteps and, and making a crack of code as well. Go through the roll call on the, on the brothers and the teams. All my brothers, yeah, yeah. So Sam, Sam's around. So he played um, footy at school level, and then a bit of cruisy surfer and um, hanging out. But he followed me to the Nicky, so he's just cruising at the moment. Um, had another, he had some uh, pointy shoulders, uh, uh, good robusters. Yeah, no, he was he was a good player. He was a good player, but he just enjoyed himself and just enjoyed relaxing. You know, so he wasn't too too phased. He was he always spoke about going to league, but. Um, he ended up uh, resting up and settling down in the Naki. Uh, the next bro was Ricky, who played a couple of years for Tasman, a um, few years for the Naki, won it with the Naki. Um, really good player. Unfortunately, his career got cut short with head knocks. Mm. So he was on the verge of um, Super Rugby and played for the Chiefs development and a few teams like that. Was on it tough seeing that Tough seeing that for the bro? Because obviously, I don't know, you, you were calling him the most talented player to come out of the family and then to see it cut short must have been not only yeah, tough that, for him, that, but tough for you. That was rough. Um, we played club footy, lucky enough to play club footy together, so that was cool. Um, but when all this went down, I was playing overseas at the time, so I didn't see it firsthand. But yeah, it's definitely hard when someone you, um, you know, someone you love goes through that. It's definitely tough times. And then the younger brothers. Yeah. Then after, then it's my sister, who's a. Um, Detective in Rotorua, <laughs> so she's got her job cut out for her. Um, she's probably the toughest of the lot. Um, one girl and in, in, um, in the in the five boys. Um, but then it goes down to after Chloe, it's it's Finn who is um, with the with the Naki at the moment. So he signed three years with the Chiefs out of school, and he's had um, horrible luck. So he's had season-ending injuries three years in a row. So it's just been a real tough run for him. But he's um, a really resilient kid and he's come back. He's actually the one that I think is going to be the superstar. Um, he's got all the skills, aggression, um, big unit, bigger than me. Um, and he's actually back over with the Chiefs this week, so it's good to see him back back running around. Um, I think as soon as he's fit and strings a few games together, there'll be a few Super Rugby teams uh, knocking on his door. But what mate, you're gone, but you did manage to sneak in what is it, one more game last week, was it? Oh, I had a cheeky game, yeah. So Finn was back from injury yep. um, and was having a club game, so I thought I jumped at the opportunity to have a have a game and 
Um, it was good fun, actually. Yep. Yeah, it was good. It's do just you, a club game in the necky. Do you miss? Do you miss that? Because I mean, you 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 went through pretty much every single team that you can go through in New Zealand, and then to get back and play club footy. How good is it to just go play eighty minutes and then just smash a couple of tins with the boys in the shed afterwards, knowing that nobody's picking up a paycheck and they're just doing it for the love? Yeah, it was good. It definitely wasn't eighty minutes <laughs> what I was dishing out, but it was um it was good to get the W. And um yeah, just to just to get back into that kind of footy of playing for your mates and like you say resting up after a game um it was pretty cool actually yeah and it's something I have, have probably missed after last year do you think that that's something that now these young players coming through they miss that opportunity to play that sort of club level like you know it's like you played in Christchurch and they jump straight into some sort of a super contract or however it goes down they miss that that sort of camaraderie and maybe getting knocked down a couple of pegs before they get into the big boy stuff yeah, it has changed. It's shifted a lot. You know, you used to have to do your time um, back in the day. Uh, the average age in, in all competitions was a lot higher. Now, if you look at the Chiefs, for example, their two locks are, are pups, you know. Um, Tupo Wai, who's the outstanding player, um, he's still under 20. Wow. Um, guys like that, you know. Like, there's and the, a lot of the Super Rugby teams have the similar stories of guys, you know, early 20s um, who have now played a couple of seasons, which is crazy. Um when I went through, there was there's no guys like that. You know, you kind of did your time, you played a couple of seasons, might a cup, and then you'd go into Super Rugby. Now they, like you say, they're getting um, picked up straight from school. Got to talk about North versus South. We talked about it earlier on in the year. Uh, we had you on the radio show. It was a great concept. It's one that everyone's pretty fizzed about. Under the rules that they've laid out, you would have, although you grew up here in the Bay of Plenty, you would be playing for the South Island. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Um, uh, and, you, and you played for the South Island in the last one. Yeah, that's right. I did. I did represent the South, um, which was a cool game. I think we spoke about it um, um, off air around playing in that game and, and Philo Pauli, Paulo fishing one out to my mate Tom Donnelly. <laughs> he got him, got him real good. Um, that was a that was a big game. But yeah, because I played down south with the Highlanders for you know quite a few seasons, um, that wouldn't bother me too much playing for the South. But it is an interesting concept of where you should play. You know, whether you play like it in the state of origin over in Aussie, you play from where you where you're from or your first game. I'm yeah. not sure what are the rules. I think for it's that? your first club. I think mm. yeah. So like your your first junior club. I think so first junior club. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, maybe yeah. So yeah, no, it's interesting, but it's, it's good to see it's. Um, up and rolling, eh? has, it, has it been confirmed? Or? Yep, 29th. August 29th at yeah. Eden Park. Yep, so, yeah, like you say, it's definitely uh, in a year where, you know, there's only so much footy we can play or we don't know how much footy we can play. It's pretty cool to have that in the calendar at the end of the month. It'll be something a bit different. I'm sure the boys will absolutely tear into each other. Yeah, no, it should be good. It's something that I'd definitely be, um, be keen to watch anyway. Get the boots out again. Who do, who do you reckon, having watched the Super, who are the uh, who are the standout players, the up and comers that that are going to be looking at edging into the frame of making the ABs this year? Oh, that's a big call, um, mate. I I'd probably be biased and say some of my boys in the necky that are playing for the Chiefs. Um, like I, I mentioned Tupo Y before, the big lock. Um, he's a great kid. I think he would have been uh, captain for the he's in twenties this year. So he, you know, he's so young and he's already fronting at the Super Rugby level. Um, so there's great. a few gaps in locking department. I mean, isn't there with it Scott is. Barrett looking like he's out for the season and Brody Retallick's having a year off this year. So there's a bit of room for a bolter in that position in particular. That's right. So I think my pick would be someone like like Toops, who's um, growing every game. And just to take you back over your entire playing career in terms of the players, if you were to go. The player that you had your best memories playing alongside or being in the team with, who would that be? Or players? Uh, one of my good mates that I played a lot of footy with down um, south first and then with um, Taranaki was Craig Clark. Um, yeah, one of my good mates. And we were a very yin and yang combination, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I was, I was, that is an accurate description <laughs> yeah. of that partnership. Oh, mate. So we, accurate. We, we, we work so well together <laughs> on, it, on and off the field. Um, yeah. No, he, he, he's a good human. Uh, his best man at his wedding. And, and in yep. terms of footy, he'd just, you know, he'd just go through, hit a thousand rucks. Uh, um, he's a top man, you know, he'd just roll the sleeves up and go to work. And it kind of allowed me to play a bit looser as a lock. Um, like a lock six type role, yep. get out in the channels and link with the backs and yep. and do some of that 
you know, play because he did the hard yard. So I always enjoyed playing with Wicker. And toughest, toughest opponent that you've come up against time and time again that you just never really felt like you got it over them? Uh, Bismarck was always tough. Um, we always had a really ding dong battle, but probably the toughest was when I had to, when I was playing the South Africans, I relied on my aggression because I was a lot smaller than them. So to go against them, you just had to really man up and in front them. Um, it was almost like playing a bully, you know, you had to really <laughs> give it back to him or give it to him first. But when Esterbeth um, oh. came onto the scene, he was way angrier than me. <laughs> <laughs> And, and he was That's way he was way bigger, <laughs> way angrier, way stronger. He was better looking. Um, <laughs> oh mate, I was like, yep, it's time yeah, to leave Super Rugby. This guy's <laughs> this guy's got my number. Um, <laughs> yeah, he he was a beast. That guy. Yeah, he came up. You've come up a couple of times grabbing his jersey, and and maybe thinking this could be one of the most terrible ideas I've come up with. Yeah, yeah, I'd still jump in, but it was I'd come off second best. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can probably wrap it up there um, Where to for you for the rest of 2020 and into 2021? Yes, yeah, so I've got an awesome opportunity with um, Taranaki uh, With the Bulls So at the moment just learning as much as I can um, Getting around the Chiefs and, and learning off those coaches Like we spoke about earlier um, But I'm really uh, excited and looking forward to working with the, the Taranaki Bulls this year What's going on with the stadium? Yeah, it's cooked um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit of a shambles to be fair. So we're playing in Englewood this year. Yeah, that's um, right. Yep. Which will be interesting, which will be a different dynamic. It'll be a smaller ground, which it could actually be quite cool with the yeah. atmosphere. And um, I think I'm hoping the community to get right behind it. You know, um, Taranaki have an awesome fan base. So I'm picking they will get behind us. Um, and we've had probably a couple of lean seasons in terms of um, on and off the pitch, really. So we're keen to, you know, it's, it's actually a real positive vibe there at the moment. Um, some new coaches and and um, the players are really keen to put that right so it's quite exciting You've got the Bay first game of the comp I think the Bay of Plenty you're uh, you know where you where you keep a PO box and it's um, but it's at the Naki who's who are we keeping an eye on um, for the Naki who do you who's been looking good in the pre-season or, or in the build-up that you're hoping um, when kickoff comes they're going to be um, playing well for you guys well, one of the boys that's been on the AB's radar is um, Bo Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, he's playing really well. He's playing some good footy at the moment, so I'm looking forward to getting him back. Um, Mitch Brown, too, who's a bit of a workhorse in that Chiefs pack. And like I said, young guys like Toops coming through. Um, really keen to see my brother back on the pitch. Yep. Um, so fingers crossed he can get a few games together because I'm looking forward to him showing what he's got. He's, he's got a lot of years of aggression just pent up. I would hate to be I would hate to be fronting up against him. Yeah, and he's he's still young, you know. Yeah, he he's got that aggress, aggression like I did, but he's a, a very very skillful player as well. So I'm looking forward to him kind of either playing in that six or lock role. Be be pretty cool. And then a couple of suds with uh, your old mate Mully afterwards with his little role within the the bay. Yeah, it's good to see him doing so well. Um, had a good catch up with him at the twenties camp before COVID hit. Um, so he's doing some great work in, um, in that area as well. So, um, yeah, I normally catch up and have a coffee with him when I'm, when I'm back home, so it'll be good to, to lock horns with him. Nice. Well, we'll let you get back to your uh, lovely wife in the small amount of time that you get to spend at, a, at a Mighty Papa Moor uh, before you head back down to the Naki. Cheers for coming and catching up with us, brother. I really appreciate it. No, it was great to catch up, boys. Thanks. Thanks, Chad. Awesome, mate. Go well, go long.